Attention all F1 fans, welcome to F1 Max. Get ready to witness the most advanced technology in Formula 1 history. The 2023 Red Bull might just be the fastest car ever, and Lewis Hamilton agrees. With its insane pace and unmatched speed, Red Bull is making the rest of the grid look like the driving Nissan Micras. But what is making Red Bull so quick? The answer lies in the triple threat DRS. This drag reduction system could be three times better than anyone else's, giving Red Bull a distinct advantage on the straights. So what is Red Bull's triple DRS, and why aren't other teams copying them? In this video, F1 Max will take a closer look at Red Bull's DRS and how they're using it to dominate the 2023 season. Red Bull have been by far the fastest car on the grid so far in 2023. They've dominated Formula 1 in the first three rounds, winning every race as well as coming second in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. It certainly has not been luck that's put Red Bull on the podium. The RB19 just seems to have another gear than the rest of the cars, with that difference really showing in the races. In Australia, Max Verstappen glided past the Mercedes twice, performing overtakes that you or me probably could have made considering the pace he had. While the RB19 is very fast in the corners, the car seems to breeze past the competition on the straights. That is because it seems like Red Bull have a distinct pace advantage when they have the DRS open. During the Australian Grand Prix, Max Verstappen's Red Bull was able to glide past both Mercedes on track. His pace advantage, however, was better shown in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. During the race, the Red Bull was clocked at 342.7 km an hour, by far the fastest speed on track. In Saudi Arabia, Max was able to use that DRS to climb from 15th all the way up to 2nd, with some pretty easy-looking overtakes. The DRS advantage once again helped in Australia, with Verstappen passing Lewis Hamilton using DRS for the second race in a row. But overtakes like that have become pretty common since the introduction of the drag reduction system. The straight-line speed advantage that having the DRS gives is often enough for the chasing car to glide past the car in front before reaching the apex of the corner. This was the case with Max Verstappen when he overtook Lewis, with Max being aided by the Mercedes being one of the slowest cars on the grid in a straight line. One of the things that really shows just how fast the Red Bulls have been to start the season is the top speed from each race. While Red Bull were nowhere near the fastest car in a straight line in Bahrain, they've topped their speed sheets for the last two races. Max Verstappen reached 343 km an hour in Saudi Arabia. That may seem like an incredible speed, and it's certainly exceptionally quick, but it's only one kilometer an hour more than Nico Hülkenberg managed in his Haas car in the same race. The next week in Australia, it was the other Red Bull who clocked the fastest time, with Sergio Perez reaching 341 kilometers an hour during the race. Again, he held the top spot by just one kilometer an hour, with the low-drag Alpine of Esteban Ocon reaching 340 kilometers an hour in Australia. Red Bull's surprising extra pace with a DRS might confuse a few F1 fans who are familiar with the rules around DRS. When DRS was introduced to Formula 1, the idea was to make overtaking easier for all the cars on the grid. The DRS has a maximum slot height of 85mm, so surely no team should get a bigger advantage than any other. The flap opening allows airflow that was previously against the rear wing to flow straight through, reducing the downforce on the car in the straights. But not every team has the same shaped rear wing, and so not every team is affected by DRS in the same way. The DRS effect is influenced by the geometry of the rear wing, with top teams usually able to get the most out of the design. Red Bull made noticeable changes to their rear wing when they took the car from Bahrain to Saudi Arabia, and these could be the reason they now have such an advantage with DRS. The Saudi Arabian Red Bull featured tweaked end plates as well as the beam wing was a single element on each side as opposed to two elements on each side as they'd run in Bahrain. This produced less downforce and would have helped the RB19 on the straights. If you look at the corners of the Red Bull rear wing, you can see the team's genius design. The rear wing features no sharp corners and the end plate outside of the flap are much smaller than their competitors. It may look like a tiny detail, but those are the sort of design tweaks which makes a difference in F1. The Mercedes and the Ferrari seem to have higher downforce rear wing, whether that is by design or just a consequence of their design choices. While it's difficult to know whether this is the exact reason, some interesting details could explain the triple DRS effect Red Bull have. Red Bull's single element beam wing allows much more airflow underneath the rear wing. This increased airflow means the car has less drag and less downforce, which makes it faster in a straight line. 
With the DRS open, this effect will be even larger. But their innovation does not just end there. The diffuser is also a crucial part of the downforce at the rear of the car. The slightly larger radius of the corner of the diffuser allows airflow between the diffuser and the beam wing when the DRS is open. This essentially means that on the Red Bull, there is three slots where there can be increased airflow. This could be what is giving Red Bull such a big advantage on the straights, especially when they have DRS open. While the DRS is important in determining a car's speed, it's also to do with the downforce of the car. The downforce is generated primarily from the floor as well as both of the wings. Downforce is also measured at the square of the speed. This means that downforce will be four times higher when the speed is double. Red Bull have always been able to balance downforce and top speed well. When other teams were struggling with porpoising and having to sacrifice straight line speed to try to combat the issue, Red Bull had a much more drivable car with less bouncing. Red Bull can control downforce at high speed, while still being able to get extra rewards from their fast engine and smart designs around the rear of the car. This speed advantage that Red Bull have found has gotten a lot of F1 people talking. One of the people who has had his say on the RB19's pace is the new Ferrari boss Fred Vasseur. In talking about Red Bull's car, Vasseur said, They have a mega big DRS effect, bigger than everybody else, and we have to understand how they're able to do something like this. They're doing something different, and they're doing something better for sure. He did add that the gap between the two teams may have been bigger in the past. Ferrari's team boss said, I think that the difference was probably bigger last year. I think we compensated part of the gap. It was probably even more obvious last year, but we have still to improve on this area. Vasseur went on to say, That problem is that we were expecting to compensate a bit more, but the gap was bigger last year. But now for sure we have room for improvement on this area. We are on it. In the first three rounds of the season, it certainly doesn't look like Ferrari have closed that gap much to Red Bull. The Ferrari may be one of the faster cars on the grid, but they still have a long way to go before they can properly challenge Red Bull on track. While Vasseur has been complimentary about the RB19, Lewis Hamilton has made a bold claim. After the race in Saudi Arabia, Lewis said that the 2023 Red Bull car is the fastest car I've seen compared to the rest. Hamilton said, When we were fast, we weren't that fast. That's the fastest car I think I've seen, especially compared to the rest. I don't know why or how, but he came past me with serious speed. The seven-time world champion added that he knew the Red Bull had this advantage. Hamilton added, I didn't even bother to block because there was a massive speed difference. You don't have to be an F1 expert to see that Red Bull had a massive speed advantage over Mercedes, but it might be a stretch to call this the fastest F1 car ever. The man driving that car, Max Verstappen, has had his say on the matter. He was asked about Hamilton's comments and said, I think if you look at the statistics, then those statements are not correct. But we also do have a very good car. Nothing wrong with that, of course. Still, we're not as dominant as Mercedes has shown some years. It's a fair point from the Dutchman, as I think Lewis Hamilton might be forgetting just how fast some of his Mercedes cars have been in the past. Max made that point saying, Whatever we have done in the eight years that Mercedes is so dominant, we also try to close the gap. That's the only thing you can do. No one was able to close the gap on Mercedes for eight years. Red Bull do have a dominant car by the looks of things. Lewis is right that the Red Bull has some serious speed. But it has got to be way too early to call the Red Bull the fastest car he's ever seen. However, if Red Bull continue the dominance we have seen to start the season, then maybe this conversation could come up further down the line. For now, we have to just wait and see whether Red Bull can make the upgrades to their car that keeps them at the front of the grid. So how much of an impact do you think Red Bull's triple DRS is making? Do you agree with Lewis Hamilton that the RB19 is the fastest F1 car ever? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. While you're down there, why not hit the like button and subscribe? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.